Hi, it's Wednesday, and that means it's time for another video edition of Widower Wednesday. I'm Abel Keough, author of the book, Dating a Widower, and today we're going to discuss widowers who don't want to go to grief counseling. Uh, the genesis of this video is an email I received, and the email goes like this. It says, Abel, I've been with a widower for nine months. His grief hasn't gotten better, and he won't go to grief counseling. I don't think our relationship can move forward unless he can work through his issues. I think if he attends at least one session, he'll see how much it can help, but I'm at the end of my rope. What can I say or do to get him to attend at least one counseling session? Um, and so anyway, thanks for the, uh, the uh, email. And so here's my answer. And this is, by the way, this is something very common. I hear that, you know, the girlfriend or whoever wants to, you know, wants him to go to uh, counseling and talk to somebody. And more often than not, the widower doesn't want to do it. And that's completely normal. Uh, most men don't want to go to counseling. I'll talk about that in a sec. But in the answer to your question of what can you do or say to get him to attend at least one session, uh, there's really nothing you can do or say. If he's not interested in going, he's not going to go. And I mean, there's really nothing you can do to force him to go. And if you do force him, um, and he's, he, he, he already has the idea that counseling isn't going to help him, um, he won't get anything out of it. It's just like when I do uh, coaching sessions, you know, sometimes I'll have like, you know, the girlfriend of a widower and she's like, well, you know, I can't get him to come on the session or, you know, he, I want to do a couple sessions and he won't want to do it. And I'm like, well, there's no point in doing it, right? Um, we're just wasting time if 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 one party doesn't want to be there. So really, there, you, you can't say or do anything to get him to attend one session. And um, I'm going to be honest with you, it really doesn't matter if he won't go or not. There's other ways that he can deal with his grief. There's other ways that he can move forward that doesn't involve counseling. Um, uh, to be honest, I didn't go. I didn't go to uh, grief counseling. I know my mom tried to get me to go. I can, you know, this was, I don't know, four or five months after, you know, my uh, late wife died. I can remember talking to my mom on the phone. And she was telling me about this counselor she was seeing and just gushing about how wonderful he was and I'm sure he was because my mom ob obviously got some some a good you know some good pointers and tips and advice from him and you know I think it really helped my mom move forward uh, but she was like telling me I need to go and I'm just like you know in my mind and I'm just, just tell you what I was thinking I was like why should I go? You know, what is he going to tell me that I don't already know? You know, that my wife's suicide wasn't my fault, you know, that things will work out. I mean, you know, I just, I personally didn't see the actual value of counseling and, and so I didn't go. And personally, I'm glad I didn't go because I think it would have been wasting his time, would have been wasting my, you know, uh, my time and things like that. Um, so a lot of the reason men don't want to go um, is that, you know, counseling is a very, they, it's a, they take a very feminine approach to it, really. It's just people sitting around talking, right? Asking questions and talking. Um, and and that's kind of a female way to deal with things. And it works good for some men, and uh, but it's not a useful approach for everyone. Um, and like, you know, for me, again, it was, that was kind of the that was kind of the mindset I had and that's kind of the mindset I see a lot is just that you know it's like well what am I going to get out of this you know by sitting around and talking you know and that's it, again it doesn't work for er everybody so if he doesn't want to go to counseling um, that's fine uh, the important thing to focus on is what is he doing to move forward right I I is he actually doing other things that could be helpful to help him you know grieve or you know do the work that he needs to do in order to open his heart to you now I'll talk let me give you some signs that that he's not doing it right that this isn't the, the, that he's not dealing with his grief in a healthy way. Then I'll talk about some things he can do and how you can tell if he's, you know, you know, dealing with the grief and moving forward with it in a healthy way. Um, so if he's, again, if he doesn't want to go to counseling, that's fine. But if he's not doing anything, right, if he's just sitting around, I don't know, whatever, watching TV, or if he's not really trying to do anything, um, then maybe, you know, he needs some time alone. You know, again, maybe it's time to kind of reassess the relationship and say, you know, um, you know, I really want this to work out, but you have some work to do and just kind of, and just kind of, uh, uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, oftentimes if you, if there's substance abuse issues, drugs or alcohol, um, that's uh, also a sign that he's probably not dealing with his grief very well. Um, anger issues are quite common as well. If he gets angry all the time and is mad, whether at you or anybody else, uh, probably a good sign. He's not dealing with his grief very well. Um, and the other sign is, is probably like, if you feel like you're becoming his therapist, that you feel like, you know, when you're talking about the late wife or, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's coming to you to unload his feelings 
veins. He's not dealing with it in a healthy way, which I'll talk about in a sec. So if you have this feeling that you're becoming his therapist and, you know, or something like that, then yeah, probably a sign that, um, you know, you probably are his therapist and not, and not necessarily a good sign that he's actually moving forward. Um, so those are some signs that you can kind of judge that, you know, is, is he making progress or is he not making progress, right? You know, again, you know, not doing anything, substance abuse, anger issues, uh, and you feel like you're becoming his therapist. Any one of those are probably a good indication that he's not moving forward with his grief or his feelings or whatever you want to call it in in a healthy manner. Now, now before I go into the, the healthy ways to deal with it, I do want to tell you and remind you uh, that it's not your job to fix him, right? Um, if you won't go to counseling, if you won't do these other things or, you know, some of these other things that I'm talking about, uh, that's fine. That's his choice. And, it, and, it's not your problem. And I know that it hurts because you want him to get better. You want this relationship to work. But in the end, you know, this is, it's not your job to fix them. People can only fix themselves. They, you can't fix somebody. You can't force them to make choices. So, um, if you are in a relationship where you, you know, where he's not getting help and you see some of these signs that he's not dealing with his grief in a healthy way, the, honestly, the best thing that you can do is walk away and let him know that he can reach out when he's actually ready to go forward and help himself. Uh, but, but again, most of the time, uh, you know, that's probably the best thing that you can do is give him the time and space to figure out what it is that he actually wants. But again, you can't force him and you can't solve the problem and it's not your job to fix him. It's his job. And you can be the reason you can be the a reason you know that he's he's uh, making these changes, uh, but there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can say that's going to make him say, "Oh, hey, you know, you're right. I should do this." If he doesn't want to go to counseling, he's not going to go. If he doesn't want to fix himself, you know, whatever. If he doesn't want to treat his substance abuse issues, or you know, he doesn't want to do anything about it, it sucks. But that's on him. It's not on you. So again, don't feel like you are the one that has to fix him because there's nothing you can do to fix him. So. Healthy ways for men to deal with it, and this is stuff that you can look for. Or again, you know, you want to suggest something. He won't see a therapist. You can give him again. You can give him some of these suggestions if he's not doing them. But again, you know, he can choose to accept it. He can choose to reject it. But in the end, it's on him. It's not on you. So don't again, don't feel like you have this burden of trying to heal him or move it. Um, totally up to him to do. So healthy ways for men to uh, deal with grief if they don't want to go see counselors. Um, uh, a really good way is having shared activities uh, with close friends and family who are male. Um, best thing I ever did, and if you, there's a story about this in Room for Two, if you want to uh, read it, uh, was, was, was when I flew to Phoenix and, hang out, and hung out with my friend Brent. Uh, again, you know, I was there two or three days. You know, we did all kinds of fun just guy things, just, you know, it was great. It was wonderful. Um, and I think we talked about Krista for a total of 20 minutes the whole time I was there and I kind of got some stuff out and that was it. Uh, but that was honestly the best thing early in my, you know, in my loss, so to speak, is I spent two or three days with my friend in Phoenix. Um, honestly, the best thing that happened, I came back renewed, refreshed, and kind of was able to do it. And mostly, I think it was just being able just to spend time with people um, and just and just and just kind of do that. Um, so that's another thing that they can do is just having a social life is a good way for men to heal. So, and again, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not talk, I'm going to kind of separate the dating life from the 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 uh, social life here. But does he have um, friends and family? Um, someone that he can just kind of hang out and do things with. And again, there's nothing wrong with doing things with you. Uh, but again, you know, you don't want to become a counselor or things like that. But does he have just some way that, you know, you know, whether it's, you know, church, a civic group, um, just any kind of, you know, is, he, is there something he's involved in? I know I've talked to widowers like, you know, maybe they belong to a biking group or a hiking group or um, just some other group. Or sometimes they have friends, whatever, they, you know, they go bowling on Thursday night or something like that. Does he have family, like, you know, again, Sunday dinners, um, you know, there's all kinds of things here, but it, does he have some kind of social life where he's going out and doing things um, and just, you know, and just interacting with people? Because a lot of things with men, they just kind of just need to interact with people to feel alive again and realize, you know what, it's going to be okay. I can, I can make my way through this. Um, again, you know, and usually, by the way, when he has these shared activities with close friends and family, or he goes out on these social things, if he wants to confide in somebody or talk to somebody, that's kind of when it happens. It, it isn't just this thing, you know, you go over to, hey, you know, friend, I'm going to come over and I'm going to cry to you or something like that. That generally doesn't happen. What it is is, you know, he's involved in some kind of shared activity with people that he trusts and people that he loves. And at that point, you know, if he wants to say something, he'll actually say something. But again, you know, have some shared activities or some kind of group. Just having a social life is actually a very good 
healing method for many widowers. Um, another way is to stay active. Um, so, you know, exercise or some kind of activity. And sometimes that blends in with the whole uh, a group aspect. You know, I talk about biking or motorcycling or, uh, but it, what is he doing to stay active? Um, exercise is actually a really good way for men to cope with grief and loss um, because they can kind of put their frustrations you know into pushing the uh, barbell or you know they take it out on the track you know me I'm a runner Um, one thing I did uh, for example is you know you know I got up every morning and I went running and this is before I met Julian was running with her but you know I went up and running I kind of had this you know this four mile run that I do and it's kind of my way to kind of uh, compartmentalize and focus. And if I wanted to think about Krista, by the way, or get out anger or whatever I was feeling towards her um, at the time, that's kind of my place to do it. Sometimes I'd come back from running and there'd just be tears running down my face, right? But I kind of uh, dealt with it in that way. Um, and, you know, could kind of uh, compartmentalize it. And then I could go inside and get ready for the day and go to work and things like that. Um, and I guess, you know, and again, to, uh, I guess another thing is, again, is he keeping, is he keeping busy? I talked about one of the things you don't want him to do is not having anything to do because sitting around being bored with nothing to do is the absolute worst thing anybody, male or female can do, um, if they're experiencing grief or loss. So, you know, does he have a job that he's going to, and is he, is he performing well at the job in the sense that, you know, is, his grief isn't overwhelming his job. He's going there for whatever, you know, eight hours a day or whatever. And he's kind of focusing. He has something to actually kind of work towards and focus on. Or if he's not working, does he have a hobbies or other things that are keeping him busy? Um, again, something else to kind of uh, focus on and kind of channel whatever feelings he has. Is Does he have something to kind of focus in on that? So those are, you know, in general, those are healthy ways for men to deal with it. And actually, if there's any widowers listening to this that have any suggestions about things that have helped them um, at, outside of what I've talked about here, feel free to leave them in the uh, comments. People find these comments really helpful, uh, you know, when people share their stories. I know widowers watch this and, you know, if they can see other stories of what men have done to kind of move forward, something might uh, click with them. So um, again, um, you know, look for shared activities, a social life uh, with a friends or family, you know, and again, usually those two, he'll start confiding in people if he wants, if, if he feels comfortable doing that. Um, staying active. So again, exercise, just some kind of activity. Um, Again, it doesn't have to be heavy exercise, whatever. It can be just going for a 20 minute walk at night, but what is he, you know, how is he, you know, trying to stay in shape and stay active? Um, And then just, you know, hobbies, work, other things that are just keeping him busy. Because again, last thing you want is someone sitting around doing nothing. That's honestly the worst thing. And that just spirals into all kinds of problems. So anyway, so though, so again, um, you know, I hope that uh, you and the widower can work things out. I hope that if he doesn't want to go to, to a grief counseling, I think that's fine. But I hope that he is dealing with, you know, his grief and loss in other ways that are helpful. Um, you know, based on your email, it didn't sound like you were seeing progress, but I hope that maybe... Um, you know, maybe these will give you some ideas to uh, share with him. And, you know, if he's watching, maybe spark some ideas in him, the things that he might want to try to, you know, to ultimately move forward. Uh, But again, just remember, you can't force a widower to heal, to grieve, to do the work that he needs. That's on him. And it's not your job to do it. Um, You know, all you can do, you know, learn to control what you can control. And then the widower doesn't want to get healed. Um, It's unfortunate, but Sometimes that's just the way things go. So um, my name is Abel Keogh. I'm the author of Dating a Widower. Feel free to leave comments below, like, and subscribe um, this uh, video. If you want to set up a coaching session, uh, whether you or the widower or a couple session, you can go to my website, www.abelkeogh.com and set up a coaching session and we can go through individual issues that way. You can get some personalized device that way. Um, Hope you're having a good day and I will see you next Wednesday.